When I made my video on Aperture's flagship LED panel, the Tri-8, many of you wondered if at that price point you wouldn't be better off upgrading to a COB single source light like the Aperture 120D. Well today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of that upgrade. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody, I'm Gerald Undone and my blood type is 422 10-bit. So I shoot these videos in a pretty small space and to make it trickier I try and maintain the functionality of this space whether I'm shooting or not. By that I mean all of my lights have a fixed position and are permanently out of the way so that I don't have to do lengthy setups and teardowns just to shoot a video. And I also have to fit everything around my editing desk, my workbench, and my set and so there's lots of obstacles to light around and limited floor space. So in order to make all that work and still achieve a reasonably soft key light, I've been using an LED light panel behind an umbrella. Originally I was using Aperture 672W but when I made that video on the Tri-8C I switched over to it and so far it's been working well and I've been quite happy. But it is true that when you factor everything in with the Tri-8C you do start to get closer and closer in price to a bigger light like the Aperture 120D. So first off, let's see if we can actually fit the 120D into the space where my current panel and umbrella combo is. And this will hopefully also tell us if there's a big enough difference in light quality to warrant the upgrade, because I think this shot here is probably the most apt comparison because we're going to be using it as a soft key light in a talking head shot. But in order to achieve a similar or better softness to what we have going on with the umbrella here, we're going to have to put the light dome on the 120D, and that's where the size concerns come in. This is the 120D Mark II with the light dome too, and the 120D Mark II by itself isn't really much of an issue when it comes to size. It's only about this big and you can it pretty much anywhere, but then it's going to be way too harsh for this application, so we have to put the light dome on it, and that's when it takes up space. And putting that light dome on it also introduces another size issue as well, because now we need a stronger stand. Now the LED panels are quite light, so light in fact that I don't even use a regular light stand, I'm actually using a microphone stand, even with the umbrella attached, and this allows me to save some space around the floor because microphone stands are a lot less bulky at the bottom, and I have no issues with it. Now you can hold up the 120D Mark II on its own with just a regular light stand, but as soon as you add that light dome to it and get it to the height that I need in order to match my current angle, the light stand actually starts to bend. So the only way to make this work was with the C stand, which of course is a lot bigger and heavier and also a lot more expensive than a regular light stand. All right, enough talk. Let's jam this monster in the corner and see if it fits. Well, it kind of worked. It was maybe a little bit too big for this space, but I was surprised at how well I was actually able to get it to fit. I had to raise it a little bit more than my previous light and tilt it down just a little bit more in order to get it up and away and not interfere with my audio equipment. And to not make me feel claustrophobic when I edit, you know, have it bearing down over top of me because like I said, I don't take these lights down. I leave them up all the time. So the shadow angles might be a little bit different because like I said, it's a little bit higher, but let's do a side-by-side -side comparison for the light quality compared to a panel behind an umbrella. So, what do you think? Which look do you prefer? Can you notice a significant improvement upgrading to the 120D Mark II with the Light Dome Mark II? Let me know in the comments below. I also took some measurements so that I can let you know basically how much space both of these setups take up. So with the panel behind an umbrella, about a decent distance to fill the umbrella, and I had it tucked away in a corner. When I say corner, I mean between a curtain and a wall. It was about 26 inches in both directions, so pretty much a square, and that's 66 centimeters by 66 centimeters then. And it was 74 inches high for the top clearance where the top spoke of the umbrella was. So that's about 188 centimeters. Now when I switched it to the Light Dome 2 on the 120D Mark II, and using a C-stand, which obviously has a bigger base, I had to come away from the wall 38 inches and away from the curtain 38 inches. So again, still a square shape and a little bit higher at 78 inches. So that's about 97 centimeters by 97 centimeters and 198 centimeters tall. So if you want to put the 120D Mark II, think of it like a meter by meter by two meters. If you have enough space, you can fit it in there and that includes a C-stand. Now another concern with using this combo in a small space would be the proximity to my microphone and having the fan noise pollute the audio. So let's give a quick listen to this system versus the panel, and the panel should obviously be silent since it has no fan, and see if it poses a problem. Now for me, even if the fan noise was detectable, it wouldn't be that much of a problem because I do a noise reduction process on all of my audio anyway, but as I'm sitting here, I can barely hear the fan, and so I don't really think it's going to pose that much of a problem, and that's with the light at 55% power and running for just over an hour, and with the microphone just over a meter away. 
Now, I definitely lost some floor space going from a tiny microphone stand to a giant C stand, but because I have it tucked off in the corner, I think I can work around it. And there's actually enough space that maybe I could slide some things underneath the C stand, which is not something that you can typically do with a light stand or a microphone stand. But you do have to factor the C stand into the price because they're much more expensive than microphone stands. So in that previous video when we were talking about, oh, why don't you just get a 120D at that price, there's other factors that contribute to it. So when you factor in the diffusion with the Light Dome 2, the, obviously the 120D Mark II and the C-Stand, this whole combination will cost you about $1,065 US. Where you can get the Tri-8C and a cheap umbrella and cheap light stand for under $600 and you'll have a bi-color light. Now there is a cheaper and smaller option for the 120D in the Light Dome Mini, which will save you a little bit of money. You'll be down to about $950 instead for this whole combo and it will save you a ton of space because it's significantly smaller. But I actually think at that point that you're sacrificing too much softness and making your light source too small, that you might be better off going with that umbrella combo because the umbrella is actually bigger and a little bit softer than the Light Dome Mini. Basically what I'm saying is I wouldn't recommend upgrading from a panel and umbrella combo that's working for you to a 120D if you were just gonna exclusively use the Light Dome Mini. I do think the Light Dome Mini can be a great little add-on to add versatility to your 120D combo when you just can't meet the space requirements, but I wouldn't get the 120D just to use with the Light Dome Mini. Now I'm worried that it kinda sounds like I'm saying that upgrading to the 120D Mark II isn't worth it, and that's not my point at all. I just wanted to address the comments on the previous video that suggested that it was a no-brainer brainer upgrade. It's not as simple as that. As you can see now, it actually ends up costing you 50 to 60% more and takes up significantly more space once you factor in a C-stand and appropriate diffusion. And that remains true even if you find a good sale on a 120D Mark I. It's still going to cost you an extra two to $300 to get the light up and softened. But you do get a hell of a lot more light for that premium though. The 120D Mark II behind the Light Dome II, in my opinion, is a much softer, much nicer, and much more versatile light configuration. And you'll get so much more output that if you plan to shoot in other environments, other than just your small studio, the 120D Mark II will have your back, where a panel behind an umbrella probably won't. And it also features a Bowens mount, which will give you access to a ton of accessories to be able to control the light, including some discounted third-party ones, because that's one area where LED panels are significantly limited in their ability to shape the light. For example, I can add a grid, which comes included with the Light Dome 2, to control the spill on this 120D way better than anything that I could do on an LED panel. So here's a side-by-side -side of the 120D with the grid versus without. And then with the grid versus the Tri-8 behind an umbrella. On the 120D, I'm using the thickest diffusion material and have the power set to 55%, where the power is set to 80% on the Tri-8C. But to give you an idea of the output, let's run through all of the power settings here from 0 to 100%. Again, with the strongest diffusion on and with the grid on, so this is about as dark as it's going to get while at 100%. I also find the 120D Mark II has more potential in the photography world as well, so if you're both a video and photo shooter, I think you'll find this unit more useful. Now, I didn't make this video a review of the 120D Mark II because there's already several great reviews out there, but I can say that the build quality and design is excellent, and it performs extremely well to the extent that I have no complaints about this light. So while it may not be a simple upgrade decision for small studio creators, I do think it's a fantastic light and worthy of the price premium if you're able to take advantage of its added versatility or if you just want the softest light you can get in your your small space. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right, I'm done.